Hello and welcome. I'm Jessica Stone and I am joined now by Dave McDowell. You know him as the mayor of Sodus Point, New York. He is also a board member at Save Our Sodus and has been with the organization for over two decades, I believe, right, Dave? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and I wanted to just bring you on to update the public on a bunch of developments that have taken place with respect to lake levels and coastal resilience. The, the Probably the most exciting one is that the infrastructure bill passed the house and is now headed to president biden's desk uh what do you make of it this is great news <clears throat> for all people on lake ontario especially people in sodas bay we've been working with senator schumer's office specifically as well as representative catco's office to try to make sure that this bill gets passed and in the bill is some money that's dedicated toward resiliency of the Great Lakes shorelines. With the fluctuating water levels, resiliency of our shorelines is more important than it's ever been. We've been told by lots of experts to expect higher highs and lower lows. Our shorelines are not built for that. And the higher highs and the lower lows cause physical damage, they cause economic damage, and they reduce the usefulness of the water bodies that we are all living around. So dedicating some money likely to be funneled through the states for shoreline projects is nothing but a good thing. And I think we've seen figures somewhere around uh, 48, 49 billion dollars that of course will go nationwide. But what's your expectation for the ability that Save Our Sodas has to get, you know, a little bit more of that maybe than uh, we might otherwise get coming to Sodus Point and to the surrounding areas. What what has SOS been doing to ensure that we do have um, a seat at the table? We've reached out to all of our federal legislators. We've spent a lot of time with Senator Schumer and his office, and we believe they really understand the problem. We've also spent a lot of time with the Army Corps of Engineers, asking them how do we get some of these projects done? One of the biggest projects here in Sodus Point is a break wall that's owned by the Corps of Engineers that is literally falling apart. It's been on the Buffalo Corps office list of projects for years. This funding we expect will fund the design and implementation of whatever the design is for that over the next few years. I know about half of it's already completed, right? This is the other half? Yeah, this is the other half. And without the break walls, Great Sodus Bay becomes Lake Ontario. Mm. And a large portion of the village of Sodus Point will be subjected to Lake Ontario waves rather than Sodus Bay waves, which are a lot different. You know, one of the things that we often uh, hear with this bill was the idea that, um, you know, this was bipartisan in nature when it was designed, but there was so much back and forth between Democrats and Republicans and Democrats and Democrats. Um, what do you know about how our local representatives voted and how have you at SOS worked with them to get to this outcome? We know that Congressman Katko voted for the bill. <clears throat> he is one of the offices that we've spent a bunch of time with. His office absolutely understands this issue. Congressman Morelli has been supportive in our discussions with him and his staff. And we look forward to his support as this money gets further allocated in the process. The state of New York initiated what they call the clear process. And, and apparently this was in the works before Ready and before the flooding of 2017 and 2019. It just hadn't been rolled out and virtually none of us had heard much about it. But once Ready was underway and all those projects were chosen and working through the permitting process and being constructed, they convened, they being the state, convened the same groups of people that worked on Ready to work on CLEAR. And what are some examples of the projects specifically in Wayne County that are on the CLEAR list that might be able to get funded through the coastal resiliency provision of the infrastructure bill? 
There are shorelines along all the embayments that are identified. There are several businesses that didn't get funding through Ready that are identified. Boat launches that pretty much got neglected through Ready are mm. on the list. And so to this point, we have some areas that are still susceptible to flooding and we'd rather not have to put sandbags up. So those areas which were on the ready list are also on the clear list. Um, I want to ask you too, you know, there has been this uh, plan 2014 expedited review done um, by what's known as the GLAM committee within the IJC. There is a public advisory group to that GLAM committee and um, you have a board member on SOS who's part of that advisory group. What do you know about the recommendations that they are going to make for the end of phase one, which is just taken place at the end of, of October. Phase one is wrapping up. We're expecting, uh, I believe, some reports um, from both the PAG and from the GLAM committee. Uh, what do you know about their main recommendations and how that will impact people in and around SOTUS Bay? I haven't seen any drafts of their report yet, <clears throat> but based on discussion with PAG members, I have recently had a meeting with the Corps of Engineers where they demonstrated what they call the, the decision support tool, mm -hmm. which they have put together to model if they make changes to the outflow, what areas around Lake Ontario and the St. Lawrence River are impacted and how. Okay. And they had they hosted a meeting um, a few days ago locally where Oswego, Sodas Point, and um, Greece were invited. Those three communities are three of the several base communities around the lake and along the river. So they wanted us to validate the assumptions they made that are built into the model about impacts of various water levels and whether it was flooding, whether it was wave action, whether it was wind action, whether it was inundation of the lake itself and those kinds of things. And honestly, they did a pretty good job. We had a lot of suggestions on how it could be better much of what I think will make it into later versions of the tool. But it's really a pretty fascinating tool that should help the River Board better understand the decisions that they're going to make. And how does that impact you as a mayor of one of these communities? Well, we certainly don't want to flood. But most of all, we don't want to be impacted more than other stakeholders around the lake when there's either too much water or too little water. And Plan 2014 didn't really keep all stakeholders whole or make sure that the issues were shared equally among all the stakeholders. And this tool and the conversations that have been held with GLAM and with the River Board, I think everybody understands that. Nobody's trying to push to say we can never flood again or we can never have low water because a lot of that is not in anybody's control. But it is in people's control to share whatever the hardship is as equally as possible amongst all the various stakeholders. And that includes hydropower, shipping, boating, municipalities, residents, everybody, fishing. So Dave, you talked about the decision support tool. When is the control board that makes all of these decisions about outflows and inflows gonna be able to start working with that? It's my understanding that they'll have use of it by winter. Okay. So it should help next spring as the snow melts and the rains come, it should help better manage both Lake Ontario and the St. Lawrence River during next year's season. Hey, listen, thanks for joining me. I'm so glad to have all of this information uh, for everyone that follows us on Save Our Sodas, our Facebook page. Um, I think we'll also put this out on social media so people can glean it and put it in our weekly newsletter. Um, really appreciate your time and thanks for joining us. We'll see you again soon. Take care.